status on Alo and the lineup changes to Benny? Uh, status on Alo is he's back healthy. He's been practicing. Uh, we're really excited to have him back. We did miss him in both those games because he's uh, arguably our, our best defender on ball and um, you know our second to third leading rebounder. So we did miss him, but he's, he's back. Uh, lineup changes, none right now. Don't mean that it won't be. <laughs> Look at Wolo. <laughs> yeah. this, you mentioned Alo. I saw Winget was in uniform for the last game. Is he available yet, or is it still kind of working? He's still injured. You know, he hasn't practiced. Uh, he's doing non, uh, non-contact non stuff. I guess he just wanted to dress out. <laughs> Can you redshirt him? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that if he can't come back, that medically we can do something for him to get a year back because he would deserve that. So hopefully we could. What's your, your little penny thing that you mentioned yesterday? Well, you know, Nike, you know, just, you know, bringing little penny back and doing some things over the next couple of years or whatever isn't out of, out of the question. So when they asked me, will little penny come back? I said, yeah, he's just working out right now in training, waiting to come back. <laughs> would Chris Rock be? Part of that? I would hope so if they brought it back. I, I asked Chris Rock last year would he be interested, and he was like, yeah, so that would be great. Why do you think people are so, so interested in Hello Penny? Like, what helped it resonate so much? I don't know. I mean, maybe because of the comedy, it made people laugh. It was just, you know, it was good uh, and that, from that aspect, from that point. But uh, it was really popular back in the day. It seemed like a, ages ago, though. But the commercials are still good. I do remember uh, the advertising agency that was working for Nike, uh, Whiting and Kennedy, coming to me and talking to me about an alter ego, and I instantly liked it, and it hit bigger than I thought it would. What about Tower Bank? Did you come back to I don't know. You never know. Was it fun to shoot the commercials? It was absolutely fun to shoot those commercials. It was uh, because it made me laugh. We were never there together, but I would have the voiceovers during my uh, commercials, and a lot of times I would be laughing and had to shoot the, the scene over because of the... Uh, what Little Penny was saying. But you would never be, you would never wear Chris Rock was. No, no, he would always do his voiceovers uh, opposite of my commercials. How, how, how much do you think Little Penny has changed now that he's old? Well, we're definitely going to have to age him a little bit. <laughs> he's not going to be the same, but uh, he's, he's probably changed a lot now that I'm the coach instead of the, uh, instead of the ball player. Go to the tie. Is he Cody Tye? He could be. Could be could Cody be Tye. Your brand just at the time. What, what did that do for your brand? Just uh, it made my brand go from one level to, a, to the next. I mean, just having a sneaker out there was enough, but to have a little penny on top of that, for people who didn't like basketball, they enjoyed the commercials, so that definitely took it to another level. This game was a throwback game. Are you going to wear Memphis State jerseys? We're going to try. That's what we're hoping for, but we want everybody to come out in their Memphis State gear. It's a throwback game. and. See some old old school Memphis State stuff in the in the building. For for you, I mean, you played for Memphis State. You know, does the name change? Does it? How does that? Does it matter to you? Do you, do you like feel a certain connection to Memphis State more than? Of course, Memphis I State feel I, I feel a certain connection to Memphis State. I mean, that's what it always was. And then when the name change happened, of course, uh, it was weird for me. But now I'm used to it. But I definitely still have the connection to Memphis State. What is what? I didn't think you were going to ask me that. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, we're just hoping to surprise everybody when we run out. <laughs> hey, Penny, uh, Central Florida got beat last night. I saw that game. It, 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 uh, the importance of home wins and home conference game, have, have you expressed that before to your team? Yes, I've, I've, I've expressed uh I've expressed it to the team a bunch that you have to win your home games because everybody plays well at home. There have been some uh, some weird games where Tulsa had Cincinnati down, like they're on the ropes and had them gone, and then they went to overtime and Cincinnati won. Even Tulsa's playing well at home, um, and then they had um, Wichita State, who had um, Temple beat, and then Temple came all the way back and beat them. But then last night they beat UCF. So a lot of these teams are just showing that home court advantage is big, and uh, we have to sustain that and to continue to win at home and just try to win some games on the road. During the final few months of the recruiting cycle, how's everything going on the trail? Man, we're recruiting really hard. Uh, we, we really feel like we're getting some traction with some guys and and uh, hoping that in April that we'll be the team that they s select. But it's going really well. How many scout trips do you think you have left? Like, how do you project that to what else could happen or new things you could do? I mean, realistically, we have five seniors, so we know that, you know, that Malcolm Dandridge and DJ Jeffries and, and James Wiseman has three of those. 
So we have two, you know, and uh, that's what we're working with right now. And you, uh, I'm sure, watched SMU in Houston last night, too. Yes. And what, what, what is your take on this SMU team that struggled last night? SMU, uh, when they lost Foster early, that was, a, that was one of their, their top players uh, with a knee injury, and hopefully he'll be okay. Uh, but he's coming off that ACL injury. It looks like he re-injured it. Uh, but they're, they're very skilled. They, they don't have a true big. Uh, the one kid, number 25, he, he's inside out, really special, but they don't have that big that it just goes to the post and posts up all the time like Wichita State uh, has uh, or Houston has. But uh, they have hybrid bigs that play inside, outside, and their guards are really good. So. They pose a problem for us because they're going to probably make us play small for the entire game, most of the game, to try to match their guys because, you know, it's going to be one of those battles where it's going to be their smalls against our smalls. And uh, until otherwise, it's just, you know, watching them last night, they didn't shoot the ball well, but Houston is tough. They make teams play ugly. And uh, that was just uh, more credit to Houston than it was to, to SMU last night. So will you adjust your starting lineup going small for this one? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I, I, Mike Parks will still play in the game, um, but I don't know if we'll have to adjust because we don't want to start the game off uh, with them having a mismatch automatically at the big because their they're big is like a hybrid. He's more like a guard, like a small forward. So we'll see. Having a week off like this between games, how have you used it to your advantage? Well, it's, it's better for us because we get so much work in. We get so much work on what they're going to do early in the week, and then midway to the end we start doing what we're going to do. Uh, how we're going to defend them is, the, is in the beginning of the week. And then we start working on ourselves as the week gets closer to the game. So that gives us, it gives us some time to work both ways. The little Tulane kind of came back there and gave you a scare at the end. Did you come out of that game feeling better about your team than you did after that ECU win? Or it was still it was kind of the same, the, same, the same feel with the exception that we got a road win. Every road win is going to be tough, no matter who you play. And uh, Tulane did the same thing to SMU. They, they went on a run. SMU felt like they had them out of the game. They made a run and pulled it to within five, kind of like how they did with us. So teams are going to make those runs at home. The only thing that I'm worried about is that in three games, uh, Houston, ECU, and then um, Tulane, 18 offensive rebounds and 19 offensive rebounds back-to-back -back games in three games in a row. So that's, that's the one thing that's concerning me right now. So you did talk about some of that thing, those long rebounds from missed threes. Is that an adjustment you've made during this, this long week? Yeah, we really made the adjustment uh, for the first two days, Monday and Tuesday, of, of adjusting to the long rebounds and really rebounding out of your area. Most of these guys are boxing out and not chasing the ball down. Just because you box out, the ball might bounce somewhere else. You still got to go chase the ball down. So we have to do better with that, and we're doing better with that now early in the week. Well, we were earlier in the week. Man, uh, the one good thing about our schedule is that we really faced some really good guards already this year that can really score the basketball. And he's a scorer. And uh, he's a guy that we have to pay close attention to. And we've kind of learned our lesson on how we played. We haven't been as successful doing this against the, the top guys. So hopefully starting Saturday, we'll have more, more attention on him and then take him totally out of the game. How familiar were you with William Douglas? Very familiar. William uh, played for me in AAU. So I'm very familiar with William, with his career at CBHS. And um, also uh, playing for me at AAU. Is he okay? Because he, like, I think got in the garbage time and didn't even register a minute. He got in but didn't fare well. Got two fouls, like, right away. And then got taken right back out of the game. So he hasn't really had – he started off his career pretty decent there. They put him in the games and gave him an opportunity. And somewhere along the line, it's like they've lost confidence in William because he doesn't play that much anymore. Or he wasn't playing until the injuries last night. And then when he got in, he didn't do well. Uh, yeah, I, I really, you know, we're trying to just get players in here, you know, and, um, you know, right now we're just trying to get the best players that we can get. If it's a guard, it's a guard. If it's another small forward or a shooting guard or a big, we just, we have to. We're losing two really good guards in Jeremiah and uh, Kareem Bruton, guys that are seniors that can score the basketball. So, you know. Would you consider transfers here? I don't know. I don't know. You just never know until you get to that point, and it depends on where we are with our scholarships at, at that time. Did Jeremiah, it seemed like he took what you said after the ECU game to heart the time he played, especially in the first half. Against. So how, how encouraging was that performance? It was very encouraging because he made a, he made a, a minor mistake, uh, something that he doesn't usually do. And I called him over to the bench. 
And I, you know, I asked him, I was like, you can't do that. You know, you just have to be smarter than that. And his thing to me was, coach, I'm just trying to play with energy. And I was like, hey, okay. You know, I want you playing with energy. Just be a little smarter, but continue to play with the energy. So I can appreciate when you say something, or if I say something to our players and they respond in a positive way. That energy has been such a big thing for you. Do you feel like they're getting it better? And, and have you seen that in this past week of practice? Yes, I feel like the energy has been great. It's just we're not rebounding the basketball. I mean, we're doing a phenomenal job of stopping the team's first option, second option, and making them miss. The only problem is we're giving them second, second chance opportunities. And, if we stop that, we can be one of the better defensive teams in the country because we're turning people over enough.